In this video, we're going to do a quick introduction to acids and bases. I'm not really sure why College Board puts this introduction into the reactions unit because we will have an entire unit on acid base coming up. Um, but they do put this in here, so we're going to go over just a couple things on acid base now. First thing we're going to do is talk about what an acid and a base are. So there are three theories of acid base, but you are only responsible for two of them. Arrhenius was the most basic. An acid was something that formed H plus when you add it to water. A base is something that forms OH minus when you add it to water. Brunsted-Lowry expanded the definition of base, but pretty much came, kept acid the same. They did change some of the terminology. So an acid is going to be something that donates H plus. You'll also hear as proton donor, okay? So H plus and proton are the same thing because a hydrogen atom has a proton and an electron. So H plus gets rid of that electron, okay? So you can use proton and H plus intercha interchangeably. Bases under the Bronsted-Lowry theory are something that accepts an H plus, okay? So the acid one is pretty much the same but the base one expands to a lot more. So let's talk a little bit about the proton, the H+. So H+, we just said, result, uh, results when an acid dissociates in water. And you are free to call it H+, absolutely. But you can also talk about it being a hydronium ion, so H3O+. What happens is that the H plus attaches to a lone pair on the water. So we have water. The whole point of this is that we're putting the acid in water, so it's dissociating. So the H plus will attach itself to one of the lone pairs on that oxygen that we know about from introchem, and we end up with H3O plus, the hydronium ion. It really doesn't matter which one you use, but you need to be familiar with both of them because you'll see both of those things in problems. So you'll see H plus, H3O plus, they are the same thing. So here we're going to talk about strong versus weak acids and bases. So strong acids and bases will dissociate completely, okay? So you'll notice, and I have it highlighted here, this arrow is only pointing in the forward uh, reaction. So HNO3 is a strong acid. We'll do more on that in a minute. In a minute. And so it forms H plus and NO3 minus, and it fully dissociates. There is no HNO3 left. Weak acids only partly dissociate. So we have a double-sided arrow, our equilibrium arrow. Okay, so what that means is that this reaction will go forward, but it will also go backwards. Okay, it can go in the forward and reverse direction. Both are electrolytes, meaning they conduct electricity in water, but the strong acids are going to be stronger electrolytes because they give off more ions, and the weak acids or weak bases will give off fewer ions because the whole thing doesn't dissociate, okay? So you can see that because of this, the arrows again. So this one's only pointing in the forward direction. This one's pointing in both. We will talk a lot about equilibrium in the next unit. It's our whole unit, okay? So you can see, for right now, all we need to know is that we can go in both directions. And then this point right here, it does not mean that the reaction only goes to the halfway point, okay? It's what we call a dynamic equilibrium, where it can go this way, and it's constantly going this way, but it's also constantly going this way, okay? And it just happens at the same rate, so we always have the same amount of either HF, H+, plus, or F-, minus, because it's happened. this direction's happening at the same rate as this direction. You need to memorize the strong acids and strong bases. There are seven strong acids. They are all listed here. Okay, you do need to know them. Most of them are what we call monoprotic, meaning there's only one H attached to them. 
but sulfuric acid has two H's. So it's diprotic. Okay. Um, however, there are plenty of monoprotic acids out there that are not strong acids. So there's not really an easy trick here. You just need to make sure you know what the seven strong acids are. It will determine a lot, especially when we get to the acid base unit. The strong bases are alkali hydroxide, so group 1A attached to hydroxide, and calcium down on alkaline earth. Okay, so beryllium and magnesium do not form strong bases. They will form bases with OH, but they do not form strong bases. So, um, so these are the things that are going to fully dissociate the strong acids and the strong bases. So here, we have in the molarity, doesn't really matter here, we're just talking about the HCl. And we're going to look at what's in the beaker, or sometimes I'll say in the bucket. So if we put HCl in a beaker with water, that's weird. Okay, sorry about that. If we put HCl in a beaker with water, we would have H3O plus because HCl is going to dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. And then we know that H plus and H3O plus are the same thing. We are not going to have HCl. We're not going to have HCl because HCl, hydrochloric acid, is a strong acid. So it's going to go completely dissociate and there will be no HCl, HCl left. We will have water. And then we'll have a tiny bit of OH- minus just because there's always OH- minus in aqueous solutions. So on the next slide, that's kind of explained, but we already just went through that. So now, what do we do if we have acetic acid? Acetic acid is not one of your strong acids, okay? So the major difference here is going to be that some of your acetic acid still stays as a molecule. It does not all dissociate because acetic acid is a weak acid. So we will still have H3O+, because it does dissociate some. We will still have the acetate ion, again, because it does dissociate some. And we'll still have water and we'll still have OH, although just a little bit. So I'll make the check mark a little smaller. And here's a slide that just kind of explains that. So again, the major difference for purposes of this intro is that weak acids do not dissociate fully, strong acids do. And same for bases. So let's talk about what a reaction would look like. And you'll see us talk about all of these different kind of compounds. Okay, so in, if it's not specified, you should use the Bronsted Lowry um, definition. Okay, if it, it usually will say it, um, but if it doesn't, you just assume you should use Bronsted Lowry rather than Arrhenius. So the idea here is that the proton donor is the acid. So you take a look at what happens to HF, and then you go over here, and it, it becomes F minus. So it donated its H plus. So that must mean it's the acid. The base accepts the H plus. So we see here that water goes from H2O to H3O plus. Okay, that means it is the base. Now, we said that this reaction can go in both directions. We see that with our equilibrium arrow. Okay, so if we wanted to talk about the reverse reaction, we could identify an acid and a base there. Now, some people, when we first start equilibrium um, or reversible reactions, can't really picture that. So if you want, you can always rewrite it 
in the reverse direction to figure things out that way. And as you get more familiar, you won't have to do that. So to label the acid base in this one that I just wrote, the reverse reaction, you do the same thing. F minus becomes HF. So it accepts the proton. So that means it must be the base. And H3O plus becomes H2O. So it donates the proton and it must be the acid. Okay. And you can see that's what it says up here too. Uh, this is the second time I'm recording this video because it didn't save the first time. That's why I have to keep erasing everything. So just ignore that. So now we can do the same thing for a weak base. And it's the same rule. You look at what happens to NH3. It becomes NH4+. Plus. It accepts a proton, so it's the base. H2O becomes OH-. minus. It donates the proton, so it's the acid. Okay, and then you can do the same thing for the reverse reaction. NH4 plus gives up a proton to become NH3, so it's the acid, and OH minus accepts, so it's the base. Okay, we're going to talk about these pairs and what they are in just a minute. Before we do that, let's talk about this weird thing. On this slide, H2O is an acid. On this slide, H2O is a base. That's something called amphoterism. So a substance that can be an acid or a base, depending on the environment it's in, is amphoteric. Sometimes you'll hear amphiprotic, but usually amphoteric. Water is not the only substance that can do this, but it is the most common. So it, depending on what it's mixed with, it could either be an acid, a proton donor, or a base, a proton acceptor. So let's talk about conjugate pairs. So what you might notice when I was going back and forth on those reverse reactions is that they, like the acid becomes a base, and then that base on the reverse reaction becomes the acid, and it's all you know, back and forth. So here are the terms we use for that. A conjugate acid is just the base after it accepts its H+. The conjugate base is just the acid after it donates H+. Okay, so to explain that, here's a generic reaction, and you'll, we'll often use HA to show a weak acid. So if HA is the acid because it becomes A minus, just so you know, A minus is not a thing. Don't worry that you don't know that element. This is just, HA is just showing an acid. So the HA loses its proton to become A minus, and then A minus is a base. Okay, if we go in the reverse direction, it accepts a proton. So we call this the conjugate base of HA. So this is the acid and this is the conjugate base and this is the base and this is the conjugate acid. So the conjugate acid is just the base after it accepts its proton. Now you can also do the reverse direction Okay, if we did the reverse direction, this was our base. So this would be the conjugate acid because it's just the base after it gets in a hydrogen or a proton. And then this is the acid and this is the conjugate base. So it just depends on what one you're talking about. So let's do that with some actual examples. So I'm going to do forward reaction for the first one, reverse reaction for the next one, just because I don't think we need to do both for both of them. So here 
NH3 becomes NH4 plus, so this is the base. It accepts a proton, and this is its conjugate acid. H2O is the one that gives up the proton here, so this is the acid, and this is its conjugate base. And then for the next one, I'm just going to do the reverse reaction. So H3O plus is going to give up its proton, so that's going to be the acid. So this is the conjugate base. And this is this HPO4 2 minus is going to accept the proton. So this is the base. And this is the conjugate acid. So just some definitions. Um, we don't really need to do much with this until our acid base unit, but I'm just throwing that out there and then we'll do some practice with just these terms. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is something called the equilibrium constant. Okay, and we, our next unit is going to be equilibrium. So we are going to talk about K. We are also going to talk about K in our acid base unit. We will never stop talking about K. It's very important. For right now, all you need to know is that K tells us which direction is favored. So if we have an equilibrium expression, it will tell us if we favor the forward reaction or the reverse reaction. Okay, and this is how that happens. If the exponent of 10 in a K value, it's going to be in scientific notation. So if the exponent of 10 in your scientific notation is positive, which means K is greater than 1, the forward reaction is favored. If the exponent of 10 in a K value is negative, the reverse reaction is favored. Okay, and we'll talk about why when we get to our equilibrium unit. For right now, we're just going to go over this. So what does that mean for our, our intro to acid base? If the forward reaction is favored, the stronger acid and base are the reactants in the expression. If the reverse reaction is favored, the stronger acid and base are the products in the reaction. Okay, so we're going to put these two concepts together. Our K value will tell us what direction is favored. And then that will tell us where the stronger acid or base are. So let's take a look. So here it says, what is the strongest base in the above reaction? So we look at our K value and the exponent is negative five. So that tells us if the exponent is negative, K is less than one, reverse reaction is favored. And then this right here tells us if reverse reaction is favored, we look at the products for the stronger one. So now we know it needs to be one of these two. So all you have to do now is figure out which one of those two is the base. So whatever one accepts the proton is the base. And so that's going to be OH minus, this one donates the proton. Okay, so since OH minus becomes H2O, that's the base. So the strongest base here is OH minus. The next one is just another way of writing the same thing. Instead of giving us the actual K value and of having to look at the exponent, K is less than 1. Okay. So if K is less than 1, reverse reaction again. We know reverse reaction means the products. So we know the answer is going to be one of these two. Now this one's asking for the strongest acid. So we figure out which one's the acid. It's this one because it donates a proton. So the answer is going to be H3O+. plus. And that's just a very quick introduction to acid base. 
um, just some terms and stuff. We, like I said, we will get so much more into it in our acid-base unit.